You know, sometimes I have clients who just can't quite understand exactly how to get to their goal. And we look at it and actually the goal was off. They didn't create the goal in the right way. They don't have the right goal set. And in fact, many times it's not really a goal, something that's specific and measurable and accountable, all those smart things that you already know. And so it's really frustrating for both the clients and for myself because we're kind of left in the lurch. Fortunately, Patrick Tian was here. Patrick, he's with Rhythm Systems and he understands exactly how to set these goals. He's had multiple companies, multiple exits. He knows how to do it. So he walked us through how to set the goals, how to make sure you execute accurately towards the goals and how to hold your team accountable for those goals as well. It results in a lot of success. He tells some stories of success and some ways that you can implement these same types of methods as well. So check this out. Some great stuff here. Welcome to Scale Your SaaS, the podcast that gives you proven techniques and formulas for boosting your revenue and achieving your dream exit. Brought to you by a guy who's done just that multiple times. Here is your host, Matt Wallach. And welcome to Scale Your SaaS. Very excited to have you here. Thank you for being here. By the way, with this show name, Scale Your SaaS, we're here to do exactly that. So we want to make sure that you grow your leads. We close those leads. We scale a team that can help you close those leads. All of those fun things so that you can get to your dreams. And what we do is we bring you people who have done this and who are helping you do this so you have all of the best ways to do this. So if you're new to the show, hit the subscribe button right now. That way you'll be notified of any of our upcoming episodes and you'll know how to scale your SaaS. And one of those amazing guests, amazing people that we have with us today is going to help you do that. So I'm joined by Patrick Tian. Patrick, how are you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for inviting me today. You have a great show. Glad to be on. <laughs> Thank you. I really, really appreciate it, Patrick. You're awesome for saying so. And I'm really excited for our conversation. But let me make sure everybody knows who you are. So Patrick, he's the CEO at Rhythm Systems. And he is a thought leader in strategic business execution and a successful serial entrepreneur who has started and exited multiple companies. I'm excited to hear about all that. He's also an international speaker, USA Today and Wall Street Journal bestselling author and CEO of Rhythm Systems, which is a system of AI-powered software, coaching, and methodology built for growing companies to successfully execute strategic plans. Rhythm System provides software and consulting for mid-market companies to achieve successful business execution. This guy knows his stuff, and I'm delighted to have him here. Patrick, thanks for being here. You're welcome, man. Excited. Me too. So tell me, what have you been up to lately and what's coming up for you? Well, you know, ever since November of 2022, ChatGPT hit, right? And everyone talks about AI. So in some ways, AI is old news, but not old news, right? It's still good news. <laughs> and so I would say over the last year, we've worked on transforming our software. We've put in a goal-setting AI coach. I think writing goals is really hard. You know, most people say mm -hmm. things like, I want to go to a trade show. Well, that's not a goal. Uh, I want to go to a trade show. I want to hit X number of contacts. I want to close X number of meetings. Now you, now you transform a wish into a goal. So we find that goal writing is really hard. And if you can't write good goals, then it's really hard to even achieve your dreams. So uh, we now have uh, an AI goal writing coach in our system that allows you to put in a phrase like, I want to go to a trade show. I want to do 20 million in revenue or whatever. And then it'll begin to transform it into a proper smart goal for you. And you can edit mm. it and play with it and hopefully help you to write a clear goal that you and your team can get focused, aligned, and accountable to execute. So that's I, I love that. We'll be right back. Game changer in lead generation, lead feeder. One thing that's super frustrating when I work with clients is driving traffic to their website, but then not knowing who those visitors are. You can't tell who these companies are, but guess what? There is a tool and it's changing the game and supercharging your lead gen. It's called lead feeder. Now imagine having the power to identify companies visiting your website, track their behavior in real time, and seamlessly integrate it all with your CRM. Lead feeder is not just a tool. This thing is your secret weapon for efficient and targeted lead engagement. Now, what sets Lead Feeder apart? It's the ability to provide detailed insights into visitor behavior, helping your sales team prioritize efforts and close deals faster. This thing's got customizable notifications, lead scoring, GDPR compliance. It's loaded. Lead Feeder is really changing the game. If you're ready to revolutionize your approach to leads and deals, head over to leadfeeder.com for your free demo today. That's L-E-A-D-F-E-E-D-E-R.com. Don't miss out on the future of successful lead generation with lead feeder.
And we're back. And, and everybody's heard about the SMART goals and all that. Tell us, what are the biggest mistakes people are making when they're setting goals for their company? Uh, the biggest mistake people make is that they come up with a, a short phrase and they think they're done. <laughs> hmm. So it's as simple as like you know, using the same example. I want to go to a trade show. Okay, let's go to trade show XYZ. That's not a goal. That's just a statement of intent. And so what people need to do is, is they need to, to write it with a verb. They need to make it specific, measurable. And so what we do is we use a red, yellow, green process. Uh, because I believe that in addition to writing it, you've got to visualize it. You know, if you can see it, you can probably have a better chance of getting it done. But if you can't see it or visualize it, you probably can't get it done already. And mm -hmm. so I like for people to tell me, OK, this is what green looks like. This is what the goal looks like. Uh, red would be the unacceptable level of performance. So red is failure. Anything below red is unacceptable. Then we have something called super green for the stretch goal because our A players like to have stretch goals. So our format is you put a red, yellow, green, a name and a date, and I promise you that's a smart goal. So that's our process. Uh I love that. I love that. I can see that being super helpful. I think that not enough companies understand how to even set goals or do they even do it? I, a lot of times when I'm coaching people, I'll pop in and say, hey, what are the goals? And they don't really have anything organized. And it's it's kind of distressing because I think goals are so powerful towards helping the team have that desire and that motivation yeah. to getting them there. Am I right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, you know, writing a goal is one thing visualizing it and getting and, and, and seeing it with your team makes a huge difference on whether or not you achieve the goal or you don't achieve the goal. So I think a lot of people just don't have the patience to sit with it for a little bit with the team and say, hey, you know, I think we're going to go do this. You know, what do you think? We want to release this software in April. You know, what do you think that looks like? Um, you know, what are the key features you want in it? Like, let's just talk it through a little bit so that what I see and what you see and what the rest of the team sees is the same thing. And if mm -hmm. we can do that, I call that alignment. And if we can align on what we're going to deliver, you have a much higher probability of, of achieving your goals. By the way, it's a fun fact that most people actually don't actually achieve their goals. They write it down, but they don't achieve it. And, and one of the worst examples of that would be, you know, January 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, mm -hmm. right? When people wake up and they go... I got it. I'm going to lose 10 pounds. I'm going to start mm -hmm. eating sweets. I'm going to do all these things. And, and they get all, all fired up. But you know what happened? They didn't have a plan. They didn't have an execution plan to go, yes, I'm going to turn my wish of losing 10 pounds into an actuality. They didn't see how they're going to get it done. And so coming out of the goal is one thing. Visualizing it and then having an execution plan to get it done is the rest of the thing. And then finally getting doing actually doing the work. Uh, is what you need to do to get your goals done. I love it. Take us back. How did Rhythm Systems come to be? What, 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 where did that all come from? I'm really interested. So, you know, back in uh, a long time ago, my very first company, I, I grew that very quickly. We, uh, we, we grew quickly over seven years to about 25 million in sales. We were number one, 51 on the Inc. 500. In those days, it was the Inc. 500, not the Inc. 5000. Uh, and then we succeeded and I sold the company. And in that process, I would say from the outside looking in, we looked very successful. You know, we had all kinds of press releases. We had all kinds of awards and everything else. But from the inside looking out, uh, I, I was running from one crisis, solving a problem, jumping to another thing. And and we survived enough walls that we just missed. And then one day we were su declared successful by the world and the company was bought and, and the rest is history. Hmm. So after that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs asked me for help. And as I started helping them, I began to see a few things. First, I figured out what my true calling was. I figured out that I really enjoyed seeing, helping people succeed and to achieve their dreams. And I realized that the, the success rate of an entrepreneur and a CEO is actually very, very low. Mm -hmm. It's, it really is. And I don't want to be a downer, but it's a really low probability. So people who achieve north of 10 million in sales, for example, only two to three percent of all the entrepreneurs that ever start the company that you get there. So you get to that 10 million dollar mark and you're really only two to three percent of 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 the population. So success is very hard. Failure is very high. And I began to study the, the idea that 
Um, I believed anyway that for younger companies, it wasn't so much a strategy problem. It was more of an execution or lack thereof problem. And so over time, Rhythm Systems became a company that focused on helping people to execute well. Uh, to me, execution means that you've made commitments. You make commitments to your employees, your customers, your shareholders, and you've got to deliver on them. If you don't deliver or you cannot deliver on your commitments, you probably have poor execution. So with poor execution comes waste, rework, and there's so many tombstones of companies that had good ideas but failed to execute, spent too long with the wrong team, etc. All kinds of mistakes that they made and they didn't make it. You know, So my thesis is that for most companies, especially the young ones, lack of execution is the, the problem. Um, and putting the right things together so that you have a simple process to think about it, to do your simple plan to get it done, and then to actually do the work and be accountable to your results uh, is a very simple formula for execution. Now, now, once in a while, people is, will, will say to me, but Patrick, don't you help me with strategy? I find that my team helps our clients with strategy, but more to clarify that strategy. Not so much, like people don't typically call me in and say, hey, Patrick, you know, I'm a $10 million firm or $8 million firm. I have no clue what to do with my strategy. You know, it's usually, you know, I think I want to birth this product or I think this product hit the marketplace and, and, and I believe that it's working, but these things are not working. So those to me are execution issues, not strategy issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think that execution is the name of the game. A lot of people have understood what the right strategy is, especially in the early days. And that's why they listen to this show. That's why they go out and get help and get coaching. And a lot of the clients I talk to, that's exactly it. When I dive in and look at their process, they're not executing. They're not pulling it off. They're not making it happen. So I, I agree with that totally, Patrick, that the, the strategy is is often there. It's, it's the execution of it that's that's really difficult. And one of the things that that you talk about is establishing a repeating rhythm. And that's part of your, your rhythm system. So what are some of the core principles of, of getting this rhythm in place so that you can have that growth quarter after quarter, year after year, and you can start to see that take off? Yeah, you know, to me, having the right rhythm is kind of like having suspension for your car. So, you know, if you have good suspension in your car, you can race around the corners, you can accelerate through the turns, you get high speeds, you can stop on a dime, right? So for all those things, you need good suspension. And so what happens is that for me, you need a very simple rhythm and the, and the rhythm is think, plan and do. Mm. I, I want people to come out of their, the simplest rhythm would be to come out of your business two days every quarter to work on your business. Especially when you're a young startup and, and trending high, you know, you're so busy that it's really hard to pull yourself out. So unless you set yourself a cadence and say, all right, guess what? In the last two days of every quarter or the first two days of every quarter, I'm going to pull my head out of the sand with my team and we're going to review the, the quarter and understand what went right, what went wrong and think about our plan for the next quarter. So that's the, mm. the think piece of it. And then and then at the beginning of that quarter, you just want to you just want to take the time and come up with over the next 13 weeks. What is your execution plan? Not your strategic plan, but your execution plan. What are you going to do? And then finally, the do rhythm is on a weekly basis. How do you meet? How do you review what your work is? And how do you stay accountable to the goals that you have created for that quarter and for that year? So that if you are having trouble in week four or five, you can pause, discuss it, make the adjustments and succeed. Because mm. you know what, man, most companies don't realize it, but they waste the first month. And then the monthly review happens if they even have one. And they go, oh my God, we didn't even touch this goal yet. Okay, well, you just wasted a month. Um, and so it's stuff like that, that that I like people to get into a nice weekly rhythm where they can be very candid and honest with themselves about mm -hmm. what they're executing on, what they're having difficulty with, and then collaborate with the teams and, and get past that. So that to me is, is, is version one. It's like the simple think, plan, do, get together two days every quarter, um, think about your business, work on it come up with your plan, and then execute it every week for 30, for the next you know 12 weeks or so and judge yourself every week. By the way, I look at accountability a little bit different. I think when I say I want you to be accountable to the plan, most people think of it wrongly. Most people think of accountability in terms of consequences. So I get the mm -hmm. phone call often actually, hey, Patrick, I need help with this guy or this gal because they're not doing their work and I need to know how to hold them accountable. 
when someone says that to me, the translation really is, I need to met out the consequences. So when someone says, how do I hold someone accountable? It really means, how do I deliver consequences? How do I yell at them? How do I, because they've pissed me off, they're not delivering. And I'm saying, mm-hmm. by then it's a bit too late. To me, accountability is, look, we got a quarter and we got 30 weeks to deliver on our goals. So every week we want to be accountable to achieve success. Not accountable when we fail, but accountable to achieve success. So the rhythm there would be that you provide a, a forecast on your goals, whether or not you can achieve it. And then if you think that you're trending poorly, you would have that candid conversation. I kind of call that a spicy conversation. So you would mm. say, hey, you know, on this particular goal, it doesn't look like I'm going to make it. Now it's week five. Okay, well, that means I got eight weeks to react. So as a team, let's not shoot the messenger. Let's react positively and figure out how to, how to save this goal because we've got eight more weeks to save the goal. Versus waiting till week 10, 11, 12 and go, oh my too God, late. I'm screwed up, it's too late. So most people do that. If, that's, if there's a mistake I like to correct, most people do that. They wake up in week eight, which is after two months of a quarter. And they go, oh shit, I got one more month to go. And I'm kind of screwed. So I work doubly hard and try and, and get that done. When a lot of those things, you probably could have known about three, four weeks earlier that you weren't going to make it, right? So things like, Oh my God, we're going to make our sales quota. Well, you could have looked at your pipeline a few weeks ago, a month ago, two months ago. You didn't have to wait till now to tell me you're not going to hit your sales quota. You could have known two months ago by looking at your pipeline, things like that, right? And even in your pipeline, what kind of quality meetings are you having? If they're crappy meetings, you don't have to even look at your pipeline. You already know that you're having crappy meetings. You, you got to fix that. So that's what I'm getting at. It's like, instead of being afraid and saying, oh, you know, Jack's going to whack me on the head. It's more like, hey, Jack, um, I'm having, I'm seeing this negative trend here. Uh, let's let's work on it early. Because most of us know that, but we don't bring it to light because we're trying to fix it. Um, but oftentimes we can't fix it in time and we get surprised or somebody else gets surprised. Yeah, I totally, it, it drives me nuts when we've got a goal, the team's working for it, especially when I was running a sales team. And you'd have a sales rep tell you, okay, we're on pace. We're on pace the whole quarter. Mm -hmm. And then you get to like the last week. They're like, oh yeah, we're way behind. Like what, what happened? Well, we were behind the whole time. I just thought some of these were going to happen. Come on. You got to like voice it up. You got to communicate. And I think that that's a big thing, right? So leaders and their teams, they need to stay focused and aligned. It's something that uh, if you can't do that, it's going to make everybody's job really, really tough. Right? Right. You know, most of, I'm guessing that a lot of, a number of your, your audience have already been funded or on the way to getting funded. And one of the worst things you can do, right, is to tell a venture capital partner or a private equity firm partner that you're going to hit your goals and then find out shortly after that that you're not going to hit your goals. And I experienced that one one day a long time ago when I literally had just told my venture partner that, you know, the quarter's going to be fine, we're going to hit our sales goals, et cetera. And then my head of sales walks in, and this is in one of my previous companies, and says to me, it was like week 10, and said, you know, Patrick, uh, you know, we're not going to hit the goal this quarter. And I said, dude, why didn't you tell me last week? You knew I was going to meet with my PE firm last week. Like, why, why didn't you tell me last week? Well, I, I knew last week, but I was trying to fix it. All right, that was week nine. Now it's week 10. You probably knew you couldn't fix it. So, so a combination of good intentions and a bit of fear, uh, all those things added to my head of sales thinking that he could fix it or, or, or fooling himself into thinking he could fix it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, his timing and my timing wasn't good. So I had literally just told my, my venture partner that the quarter looks fine. And literally the next week he tells me, you know, we're not going to make it. And now if he had given me the information a week earlier, I could have had a different conversation with my venture partner. As a CEO, I could have appeared much more in control of my company, much more in understanding of what are the problems to fix. Because I tell you what, you know, your venture partners, your PE partners, they want to know the truth, the good and the bad and the ugly. They don't want you to yeah. go in there and say things are rosy and fantastic when you're about to miss a number. So I would have had a lot more credibility if I had been able to walk in and say, hey, here's the goals, here's where we are. I'm gonna spend the next four weeks working my ass off to try and figure out how to make it versus walking in saying, we're gonna make it. And then next week calling him saying, "Um, guess what, we're not gonna make it. (laughs) So I had to recover from that. 
And you only get so many opportunities uh, to make that kind of mistake with a venture partner. Yeah, I'd agree. So what did you take away from that? What did you learn for how you handle that type of situation going forward? Was there, was there more communication? Did you coach your teams, your leaders, how to make sure that you're on the same page? What, what happened from that? So from that, I would, uh, in that case, we started relying on leading indicators. So we created a, a leading indicators dashboard where we would agree on what are the key indexes we would look at, right? So I, I didn't have to depend on someone feeling, ah, oh, today's a bad day. I'm going to tell Patrick I screwed up or I'm going to tell Patrick the bad news. But we can look at indicators. So we would report on certain leading indicators. In this case, like size of pipeline, uh, and number of, number of meetings that we're having with, with potential clients. And so from that, we can look and we can say, all right, you need to have X dollars of pipeline in order to be successful. And then using the red, yellow, green, if your pipeline isn't where it needs to be, you mark that red. You mm -hmm. mark that red. So we can see it's, it's red and then everyone knows way ahead of time. So that way I try to systemize it versus relying on a person to have feel strong enough to tell me something. And I try and systemize it, take the emotions out of it and also try and take people away from feeling like they failed. Because I would say you didn't fail. The priority is red or the KPI, the key performance indicator is red. You as a person, you're not red, you know. So now if the person fails to deliver results over and over and over again, that's a different issue. That's an HR issue. That's not a leading indicator work issue. So, so to me, I would, I would, the takeaway is to, is to come up with a set of leading indicators that you can rely on that people are reporting on in a dispassionate way. If it's red, mm -hmm. it's red. If it's yellow, it's yellow. And so therefore you got to create the clear, uh, objective success criteria. What What is the number to be green? What's the number to be red? And in between is yellow. So when someone says, uh, you know, a priority or a KPI is red, yellow, or green, it's not based on their gut. It's not based on them saying, oh, I feel bad about it this week. Therefore, it's colored red. It's more like my forecast puts it into, into this place and this number gives, it, I'm sorry, it falls in the red number. So I don't like to put a red, but it's red. And so, boom, you know, you just color it red. So you got to be dispassionate. You got to have objective, mm -hmm. you got to have objective criteria. Uh, and then you got to not yell at people. So imagine the first time somebody shows you, Matt, you know, hey, I'm so sorry, Matt, this KPI is red. And you go, what the hell? Are you kidding me? Okay. So next time that person is going to be like, nah, it's not quite red. It's kind of lime green. It's yellowish. It's orange, maybe. And the person's afraid. And I would say that, so I call this the gift of red, you know, that that if um, if somebody says an index is red, they're giving me the gift by letting me know, by highlighting it to me so that we as a team have time to fix that and work on it together. So I call that the gift of red and I call it the gift of red because I want my, the people I coach, the CEOs I work with to have a different attitude and mind space to, to digest bad news. Because to mm -hmm. me, Bad news is actually good news because somebody had enough guts to tell you the bad news and now you have time to work on it versus not telling you the bad news. Then you get surprise news. Surprise news is much worse than bad news. So you get bad news early, you can work on it. You get surprise news later, it's, it's too late. And so with that in mind, the psychology is you've got to encourage people to share the tough news with you. And first thing out of your lips needs to be thank you, man. I know that was hard to tell me that, but thank you. I appreciate you let yeah, me know that great challenge. It's so good. It's, uh, I mean, this is just gold that you're giving us here, Patrick. I think it's really important, everything you're sharing. I want to make sure that we can wrap up and kind of summarize what what advice would you share with software leaders who are in that early stage and needing to better execute, needing to have that accountability and the ability to get to the goals much better. What would you share with them? So, you know, my buddy, Mike Prager, who runs Avid Exchange of been worth it, working with him now 24 years, from zero to IPO. Today, they're on the NASDAQ stock, stock exchange. And um, 24 years ago, I told Mike, I said, look, I know it's a startup. I know you don't have a lot of time, but you and your partner should just take two days every quarter to work on your business planet and just do the work. So I would say that's the advice. And, and what's, what's funny is I gave him that advice 
And then a few years later, I started doing this for real. Like I started doing this as a business. And so mm. he was my first customer. So he was my customer before I did this as a business. And so I asked him after a few years, uh, you know, I said, Michael, what is the best advice I ever gave you? And I expect him to give me some wisdom that I gave him over the years. And he said, the best advice he ever gave me was at the very beginning when he told me to uh, just take two days every, 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 every quarter to think about my business. The Love reason it. why he said that was the best advice is because he created that space. And then it's like putting a big rock in the stream and everything, mm-hmm. the water flows around the big rock. He said, early on, you gave me that habit, Patrick. I put that big rock in the stream and the water flows around it. And then through thick or thin, tough days, good days, we always met. And so he's done 96, 98 planning sessions since the last 24 years. He's never missed a single two-day quarterly get-together with his executive wow. team. And wow. so to, to me, that's the best, the, the best, because I don't know what's going to happen in their business, you know. I don't know what they're going to see. I don't know what's going to happen. But I know if they don't get together to work on it, think about it, they're going to miss it. And then mm-hmm. the second thing I would say is if you can, get yourself a coach. I mean, get someone to help you look at stuff. Uh, it's always good. I mean, the best athletes in the world have coach. And I think and I think people make a mistake of thinking that getting a coach may be a weakness. Mm-hmm. But really, the best players, the best sportsmen, they all have multiple coaches. And look, even the great Steve Jobs had a fantastic coach on his side. So we all need coaches. So true. I love it. And, uh, I agree wholeheartedly. I have a coach. I, the people who come to me, they're looking for great coaching. So I think it's really, really powerful what you can do with a great coach. Could have said it better myself. So Patrick, how can everybody learn more about you and rhythm systems? Well, you can come to patricktn.com. Um, I have a free strategy execution assessment there. You can take that and help you learn about yourself and your company. You know, I think if you can learn more about yourself, figure what you need to do, um, you can get one step closer to your destination in your dreams. Okay, perfect. So we'll put that link into the show notes. So if you're listening, if you're watching on YouTube, definitely check that out. But Patrick, this has been fantastic. Thanks for coming on. Thank you very much, Matt. Absolutely. And everybody out there, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Once again, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any other amazing wisdom like what Patrick just shared with us. So hit that and you'll be good to go. And we're looking for reviews. So if you think this is good stuff, if you think you're getting help, please post that. We want other people to know about it so they can get help as well. I really appreciate that. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Thanks for listening to Scale Your SaaS. For more help on finding great leads and closing more deals, go to mattwallach.com.